Emulation has become a big part of the gaming and tech landscape, allowing users to experience a wide variety of classic games and software on modern hardware. Emulators mimic the behavior of older consoles, operating systems, and hardware, enabling users to enjoy retro gaming, test applications, or run programs that are no longer available. Over the years, the selection of emulators has only gotten better, offering increased compatibility, higher performance, performance, and more features. So what emulators do I recommend you have installed? Well, let's talk about it because there's only six you need to really have installed. So I want to start off with the big one, that being RetroArch. Now, this is not a standalone emulator, it's a cross-platform interface that hosts multiple emulators as plugins called cores. RetroArch is built on LibRetro framework, which allows it to use cores for different consoles, making it an all-in-one platform that can emulate a variety of systems without the need for multiple emulators. It supports a wide range of systems, including Nintendo, PlayStation, Sega, and Arcade. Anything you can think of that's retro, you best believe there's a core for it. Even PS2 and GameCube have good reliable cores. For PS2, there's LRPS2, which is a branch of PCSX2, and is great. Because everything that PCSX2 can do, you can get that in this core, as well as with the same game compatibility. For GameCube, there is the Dolphin Core that will also support Wii games, and this core is basically the same as the standalone Dolphin emulator, with all the same features. So because today these two cores are so good, you honestly don't even need to use the standalone emulators. And if you can have your PS2 and GameCube and Wii collection consolidated with all of your other retro consoles, then why not keep it all on RetroArch? One of the standout features of RetroArch is its versatility and cross-platform support. It runs on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. It continues to impress with high definition upscaling, enhanced shader effects, and multiplayer features. Its compatibility with a huge library of games, ease of use, and customization options make it the go-to for many retro gamers. If you need help setting this up on your computer, then you can find my setup guide in the description below, as well as setup guides for every other emulator mentioned in this video. The next emulator you should have installed is the PS3 emulator RPCS3. Now this is an emulator that is not available in RetroArch as a core. Over the years, RPCS3 has improved its compatibility and now it supports a big portion of the PS3's library of games. This wide compatibility is crucial because many PS3 exclusives and other older games are no longer easily accessible on modern systems. My favorite features is being able to upscale the graphics all the way up to 4K, if your computer can handle it of course. Also there's graphical enhancements, including anti-aliasing and isotropic filtering and upgraded textures, which can really improve the visual fidelity of PS3 games. It doesn't matter if you have weak PC specs or the best PC specs, RPCS3 allows users to fine tune settings for the best possible performance, no matter the hardware. Though there may be some compromises in terms of visual quality, this emulator is still in development and still receives frequent updates that are only improving this emulator for the future. It's available for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and Android. Another emulator you want to have installed is the Xbox 360 emulator Xenia Manager. This is the same version of the original Xenia emulator, but with a simplified interface that's easier for setup. While Xbox 360 emulation has been challenging due to the console's architecture, Xenia has made remarkable progress in recent years. The emulator now has impressive compatibility, allowing you to enjoy titles like Halo 3, Skyrim, and Forza Horizon with great performance and visual fidelity. Yes, you can run games at a higher resolution, and Xenia supports post-processing effects like Nvidia FFA and AMD Fidelity FX resampling, and some games can even run in ultra widescreen. Now unfortunately, this emulator is only available for Windows, but it is still in development. 
Also, you will want the original Xbox emulator XMU. This one is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So the original Xbox had a lot of exclusive games that were only released on Xbox, and this emulator will allow you to relive those classics. XMU can run a large number of original Xbox games, and it does so with a high level of accuracy and stability. The emulator focuses on accurate emulation, meaning it strives to replicate the original hardware's behavior as closely as possible. This makes for a more authentic gaming experience compared to other emulators that might take shortcuts or sacrifice quality. It offers options to tweak graphic settings, resolution, and performance to get the best experience on your hardware. And it really isn't that hard to run, so you don't have to have the best specs. This emulator is still in development. Now we have the 3DS emulator Azahar. Now this emulator is a fork of Citra and Lime 3DS, two previous good 3DS emulators, so you know Azahar will be good as well. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. It has high compatibility and support for most 3DS titles. And I know the real question on you guys' mind is can it play all the Pokemon games? And yes, it can. Now I'm not going to show you any gameplay of those because I want to keep this video up, but trust me. Also, your other big 3DS titles such as The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Super Mario 3D Land are all playable. Not only playable, but playable with upscale graphics as well, and stable frame rates. If you want to go one step further, then you can add texture enhancements and mods, making it a powerful tool for those looking to improve their 3DS gaming experience. And the last emulator I recommend is the Nintendo Switch emulator Citron. This is a fork of the once great emulator Yuzu. Now, I know some people will say, don't emulate the system because it's still relevant. But if you're someone who wants to emulate the system, then Citron is the way to go. Also, there's an emulator called Sadachi, which is another fork of Yuzu, which is good as well, but in my testing, I have gotten higher frame rates using Citron, and the shaders compiling is better. So if you're choosing one of these, Citron is what I would go with. As far as accuracy, they both are on the same level with a lot of games being playable, as well as all the exclusives being playable. And these games outperform the original Switch version because you can upscale your resolution up to 4K and increase games that ran at 30 frames up to 60 frames on Citron, giving you a way better all around gaming experience than on the original hardware. Citron is available on Windows and Linux. All of these emulators provide access to older platforms and their content, whether you're looking to relive childhood memories with retro games or explore inaccessible systems. As time goes on, emulation will continue to only get better as new emulators for newer systems appear and the newer ones that exist now, such as the PS4 emulator Shad PS4 will only get better and one day make my list for the best emulators. Take care and keep emulating guys.